Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the HJC i100 helmet. This is the first convertible or flip over helmet to land with a certification to the new ECE 2206 safety standard. It's HJC's i100 and it's also their first flip over so it's been interesting to see how it stacks up to the brands who already have a helmet of this type on the market. I've spent about 300 miles in this one so I can run you through the essential info and also give you an idea of what I think of it in use. The shell is made from polycarbonate and a size medium i100 weighs 1925 grams. HJC call this helmet lightweight, but our scales call it the second heaviest of the 87 helmets we've weighed since we started making these videos two years ago. Thankfully that weight is quite well balanced and I can't really criticise the way it felt on my head while I was riding, but I do think it's a bit cheeky to call it lightweight. Considering this is HJC's first flip over helmet, they've done a really good job of the operating mechanism. Pushing the red lever at the base of the chin bar releases it and it can then slide all the way back over to the back of the shell. There are two main benefits of this design over a regular flip front. First, the weight balance and aerodynamics are better because when it's at the back, the helmet isn't top heavy and the chin bar isn't sat in the airflow as it would be if you had the chin bar here. Secondly, you get use of the main visor when the chin bar's open and on a normal flip, you can only have the visor down when the chin bar's closed. This helmet though has something that other flip over helmets I've tried don't have. It's got a self-closing visor. So on other flip overs, when you flip the chin bar up or down, you'll always end up with the visor in the raised position. But on the i100, you'll end up with the visor down as it automatically lowers at the end of the chin bars travel in either direction. The i100 is dual homologated, so it's tested as a full face with the chin bar closed and as an open face with the chin bar open. There's a lever to fix it in the open position. It's just on the side here. And I'm told that this is a requirement of the ECE 2206 standard. This sliding red tab holds it back and I didn't find that easy to use while riding. But in reality, whatever the legal issues, I don't see anyone locking the chin bar back on this helmet. The chances of that chin bar swinging forward of its own accord are infinitesimal. And the chances of ever getting in any trouble for riding with it back and unlocked, I would say are even smaller than that. HJC have added skirts on the base of the chin bar as well, which pop out when you lift it. You can just see them here, and they stop air flowing between the shell and the chin bar when it's in the back position. And there's also a chin curtain, which has the same effect, as well as blocking off drafts when you're riding with the chin bar down. On some flips, the chin curtain gets in the way of operating the chin bar release. But I didn't find that to be the case with this helmet. It never got in the way once. So let's move on to venting. There's one massive scoop on the chin that opens in two stages and it sends through air through inlets in the chin bar and then it comes through the top of the chin bar and also through to the inside. I could really feel the air flowing from that when it was open. The top vent allows air to enter through two inlets and because that also opens in two stages, you can have it half open for a little bit less airflow. Once air gets inside, there are channels sculpted in the EPS impact liner that let it circulate towards the back of the lid and then out through three exhaust vents. Because these sit just above the chin bar when it's in its back position, the air can still escape even when the helmet's in open face mode. I found this top vent to work nicely as well, although it doesn't allow air to flow as strongly as that chin vent. The visor has two lowering and lifting tabs, just here. There aren't graduated steps for the visor as it lowers, but you can leave it slightly open to allow some air to flow in. I found it better to click the visor completely closed by pushing down on the middle of the top edge rather than using those tabs. The visor is protected against mist by a pinlock insert. It comes in the box with the helmet and it's a pinlock 70. So it's the middle in terms of protection, which worked fine in my time with the lid. The pins can easily be adjusted as well to alter the tension of the insert, which isn't the case on all helmets. There's a sun visor on this lid too. It operates on a slider on the left of the lid. And I always found that to be really easy and intuitive to use. Now, something I've not seen on any other helmet though, there's an adjuster wheel for the sun visor drop. It sits just in here. There are two marks on it. Rotating that adjusts the amount of drop, set it to the biggest drop, and the bottom edge will sit seven millimeters lower than if it's set at the minimum. So you use those marks to use that wheel to set the amount of drop that you prefer. That sun visor has an anti-fog coating, and that's always my preference. Some say coating the sun visor reduces optical quality, which is why some brands don't do it, but I didn't notice any reduction in optical clarity for this having a coating. 
Moving to the interior, the comfort lining's fully removable and that's a dead easy job, taking it out and putting it back in. The fabric covering that inner lining is nice and soft against the skin and it worked well in hot weather, which was handy for me as I tested this helmet through a 15 day heat wave. In common with virtually every flip front helmet available at the moment, the strap fastener is a micrometric buckle. So behind that lining, there's full integration capability for an intercom. It's rigged out for HJC's smart intercom range, which will be the neatest fitment, but that capability doesn't block out universal comm systems if that's what you prefer. I fitted a Cardo PackTalk Edge to this helmet and it was fine. But the main appeal I would say to the dedicated system would be the way the microphone mounts into the helmet. I had to mount the regular boom mic from the Cardo system so near the mouth that the boom brought it all the way around to the right hand side of the opening here. It worked and there's no outright need to go for the HJC system if you already have something else or if you prefer something else. The speaker recesses are well sized and they've got room for either Senna or Cardo speakers. I put the 40mm Cardo speakers in there, they fit inside completely and the 45mm ones will go in there as well although they will sit slightly proud of the recess. Right, let's deal with sizing and approvals. The i100 comes in sizes from extra small up to double XL. There are three shell sizes for that range. The smallest takes in lid sizes extra small and small. The middle one covers medium and large helmets, and then the biggest shell is for XL and double XL helmets. I normally wear a medium, but I'm finding I need to go up a size in an increasing number of HJC helmets, including this one. The medium wasn't too bad when I tried it on with the chin bar open, but as soon as I closed it, the helmet compressed around my temples, so I really needed to go up a size. The large was fine while I was riding, but I think fitting the thicker cheek pads from the medium helmet would have made the fit absolutely ideal. Replacement cheek pads are available separately if you find you have a similar issue to me. On the approvals front, the i100 is approved to ECE 2206, which is gradually being phased in to replace the outgoing 2205. As part of that, certification test impacts are made across a wider area of the helmet and also a range of different impact speeds. They're also tested to see how they cope with glancing blows, as well as the customary test for direct hits. In my opinion, that new standard is better and it gives more confidence in the protection level from a helmet that meets it. As I said at the beginning, the i100 is dual homologated, so it's been tested as an open face with the chin bar back and as a full face with the chin bar down. It's not ACU approved for track use, but anyone who wanted to use an i100 for that would probably need their head examining anyway, and it's not yet been rated by the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme. So having spent 300 miles or so in this helmet, I think it's a decent option if you're after a flip over helmet. I've mostly worn it for commutes of about 35 miles, and the most time I've spent in this lid at any one time is about 90 minutes. I found it comfortable throughout that, and it didn't leave me feeling any neck ache either. When I tested a similar lid a few years ago on a tour, I found the weight did give me neck strain after a few days in the saddle. I can't say for sure that this helmet would do that, it wouldn't be fair, but that 1900 gram weight would concern me for day long rides over a week or so. The chin bar mechanism though works really well, the visor's good and the ventilation is very good, especially that chin vent. I like the lining inside and it's also easy enough to fit an intercom of your choice, which is a plus. That ECE 2206 certification is another plus point as no other helmet of this type has that certification as we record this. As we make this, the i100 costs £279.99, which puts it pretty much on a par with the majority of its flip over rivals and a little bit cheaper than the Shark options. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC i100 flip over helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.